On this episode of Repair Geek, we revisit the generator video and fix all the stuff I screwed up and answer a bunch of your questions. Alright guys, before we get started, the reason I made this video is I'm getting a lot of the same comments on my original generator video and I also have some things I, I needed to change about my setup. Some guys brought some things to my attention that made a whole lot of sense. So if I replied to one of your comments and just sent you this link, that's why is because I'm getting this, I'm getting your same question pretty frequently. So I figured I would just make a video about it and then try to address it in one big blanket video. So one of the main reasons I felt like I had to come back and make this video is because I had multiple people come to me and tell me that my setup here on the governor regulator was not correct. If you guys go watch the other video that I put up, I have a female sticking straight out like this. And the reason that's an issue is because the hose that I have plugging into this female is male on both ends. The reason that's a problem is because if the hose for whatever reason comes out of this female on the governor regulator, it's then dumping raw natural gas outside my house. It's a one in a million chance it would happen, but like I said, people brought it to my attention and it makes a whole lot of sense. So the reason the reason this ball valve is here is because when I run on gasoline, I was concerned that I would be pulling engine vacuum through the governor regulator and out into the atmosphere. So by putting this ball valve here and closing the ball valve, I know I don't have a vacuum leak. All right, so I had a couple people ask me, what do you do if your natural gas supplier stops delivering you natural gas? Well, for me personally, my natural reaction would be go back to gasoline. If that's not available, you could go to propane. Propane's a little bit less convenient for me, so I would try gasoline first, but that's completely up to you. That kind of leads me into my next point. A lot of people were also asking, why would you go to the time and effort to convert this generator to run on natural gas when you could just buy a propane generator and be done? The answer to that is, a propane generator won't run on gasoline and it won't run on natural gas. This one will do all three. Another common, common question that I was getting about this generator is after I did the conversion was what do I do if I want to run it on gasoline? And the quick answer to that is you start it just like any normal generator. You put gas in it, you pull the choke and you hit the start button and it fires up. Um, I had one guy tell me that basically it's not going to run correctly. One of the air bleeds is partially blocked on the carburetor and if you watch the video that's true it is. But I'm going to prove it to you, it doesn't matter whether it's blocked or not because I'm going to take it outside and run it. For any of you guys that are curious, yes, this is a vented gas can. They are not easy to come by in the United States. I'm not sure how it is in Canada, but I will put a link in the description to this gas can if you guys are interested. If you want to, bulk, if you want to buy them in bulk, if you plan on running your generator for a long period of time with gasoline, it's definitely a good option. I don't store the generator with gasoline in it just because it's going to go bad by the time I get to use it. So I got to dump some in real quick. So what you're looking at here, guys, this is a 100% cold start on gasoline. Now you see me check the gasoline valve on the generator and the reason that is is because anytime you run this on natural gas that gasoline valve is going to be off as you can see the engine starts normally as it always does on gasoline I didn't have any issue alright so I'm heading back inside the house and I'm going to do the exact same test as what I did in the other video for those of you that don't know, that is going to be my electric dryer on low. Only this time my generator is going to be running on gasoline with the conversion kit installed. As you guys can see, it runs exactly as it did before I did the conversion. The conversion kit really doesn't make any difference at all how the engine runs on gasoline. Just like I did last time, I'm going to take you away from the panel on one continuous shot, walk outside, and show you I'm not messing with you. 
And as you can see, all of the parts for the natural gas conversion are still installed. The spacer is still there. My spacer that I made is still there. The regulator is still there. The whole nine. So when I go to shut the generator down, when it's running on gasoline, what I do is I shut off the gasoline valve on the generator and let the generator run out of fuel. What that does is that will drain the carburetor of any fuel that hopefully should not spoil in the event that I need this, to run this on gasoline in the future. So what I'm showing you guys now is I can go from gasoline to natural gas with this kit in about 30 seconds. I don't need to make any adjustments to the air fuel. It just fires up and runs just like it did on gasoline. It makes no difference whatsoever. When you go to shut the generator off when it's running on natural gas, I always shut the valve off on my house to shut the generator down. That way I know that the hose has no natural gas in it, the generator doesn't have any natural gas in it, everything is completely emptied out. Alright, so I actually left this part out of the original video in the interest of time. Because if you remember, that video was about 20 minutes long. Natural gas and propane engines are what's called dry fuel engines. Meaning, there's no liquid going down the intake tract, lubricating the intake valve, and cushioning the valve seats. Now, when I say cushioning the valve seats, what I'm saying is, as the valve in the cylinder head opens and closes, the gasoline going past the valve actually has a cushioning effect on the valve and valve seat as it closes. Natural gas and propane do not do that. If you order a natural gas prep car like a Honda Civic or F-150 or it doesn't matter, the main difference in those engines, it has hardened valves and hardened valve seats. What eventually will happen is the opening and closing effect of the valve will cause an issue called valve recession. What valve recession is, is that the valve opening and closing actually beats the valve seat up into the cylinder head. That will change the valve adjustment, eventually causing the valves to hang open and the engine to run like crap if it runs at all. So an engine that runs a lot on natural gas or propane either needs hardened valve seats or more frequent valve adjustments. Now, before any of you freak out, this is probably something you're not going to see for thousands of hours of runtime. There are ways to alleviate this. They Valvoline makes a natural gas motor oil, believe it or not. I'll link it down in the description for you in case any of you guys are interested. You can also run a lubricator in the intake tract. I looked into putting a lubricator on this engine and the problem is it's so small that nobody makes an engine lubricator for it. So with that in mind, if I have an issue in the future, I can probably have the cylinder head off this engine in about 15 minutes and I'll take it to a machine shop, have hardened valves and valve seats put in it, and I'll no longer have an issue. If you guys want more information on valve recession, my suggestion is to Google it because there is more information than what you'd ever need to know on that topic if you're truly interested. All right guys, that's what I got. If you still have questions that I haven't answered in this video or the previous one on this generator, put a question, put your question down in the comments, check the description, my email address is in there, shoot me an email, I'll do my best to get back to you. But with that, as always guys, if you like the video, hit like, and if you wanna see more content, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.